Manya Nation, let's ride. But Don Nealon's Mountaineers enjoy walking in where angels fear to tread. As the hills of West Virginia resound with the sounds of Golden Blue football. Here is Harris in trouble. Stiff arms, the would-be tackler comes out of the 25 to 20. Goes around the mountain to 15 to 10 to 5. A touchdown with Virginia. He did it. to be a Mountaineer wherever you may be. And now, the show brought to you by Mountaineer fans, for Mountaineer fans, the Country Road Webcast. What's going on, Mountaineer Nation? Welcome to Game Week and welcome to the first game preview and prediction show here on Season 6 of the CRW Podcast. We really appreciate you joining us here for this one. We've got a fun one lined up. We're going to start it off with a new segment for this season of the podcast that we're calling Behind Enemy Lines, where we're going to try and get with someone who covers West Virginia's opponent that week and learn a little bit more about their ball club. And we had a great guest to help us do that this week in Corey from the Hardcore Penn State football show really does a great job breaking down the Nittany Lions so that Mountaineer Nation can get to know their team a little bit better and what they can expect from this Penn State club and we had to get his prediction as well for the game so that'll be our first segment here coming up in episode 161 and we'll follow that up with me Big Bubba Brad and Steven all getting together and talking about things from the Mountaineer side and all providing our key to victory and score prediction for the first time in the 2023 WVU football season. Super excited to bring you guys this one, and I really think you guys are going to enjoy it. Really appreciate you guys tuning in, whether you're tuning in watching this on the video side or listening on the audio side. If you're on the video side, whether it's on our channel or on the WV Sports Now channel, as you can find our show on the web at wvsportsnow.com, where you'll find all kinds of great Mountaineer content. And we're really appreciative to be a part of the Sports Now family of networks. Do us a favor if you're on that video side, like the video, and be sure and subscribe to the channel. If you're listening there on the audio side, be sure, share us around with other Mountaineer fans you may know, but we appreciate you taking in Season 6, Episode 161, either way that you are here, and we really think we've got a great episode lined up for you here to kick off the 2023 Mountaineer football season, but I'll quit babbling about it and let you guys enjoy it, starting off with our first Behind Enemy Lines segment on Season 6 of the Country Roads webcast. <laughs> All right, Mountaineer Nation, here we are with our first behind enemy line segment of the 2023 West Virginia football season, and we are happy to be joined by Corey from the Hardcore Penn State Football Podcast, going to help give us a debrief on this year's Nittany Lions team. How are you doing today, Corey? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing, Jordan? I can't complain. Doing well, doing well. We're going to get into the Penn State team. He's going to break it down for us, both the offense and defense, all aspects of this year's club. But before we do, why don't you give our uh, viewers and listeners, uh, let them know where they can find you on social media and where they can find your show if they want to tune in. You guys do great work over there uh, covering Penn State football. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, at Hardcore PSUFB, pretty much on every social media platform. And Hardcore Penn State football, uh, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, just just uh, state media on YouTube is the only one that's a little bit different. We have a couple different shows showing up there uh, on our YouTube that will be uh, player-driven, 
post player driven and then our fan show as well. Um, having said that, let's get into talking a little bit about this year's Penn State team. Let's kick it off with what is probably known to be the strength of your all's offense, the Penn State running game. We know they have some excellent backs back there. A couple of true freshmen last season, they really burst onto the scene, Allen and Singleton. But what can you tell us about the run game overall, the offensive line leading them up front, everything about that Penn State run game that West Virginia should be worried about with this uh, great Nittany Lions team? Yeah, they're they're good, right? Um, you know, they provide two different kind of styles of running. You have Nick Singleton, who is a little bit more of a home run hitter. Uh, at times last year, especially early in the year, he struggled a little bit. He wanted to bounce everything to the outside, um, but you definitely saw that maturation over the course of the season, where he was he was hitting the hole on, in the inside, and then and then realizing that he can still take things to the house even on an inside run. Um, and then you have Katron Allen, who was a former IMG Academy recruit. And so came in to Penn State just a little bit more polished as far as his patience, as far as his vision. And you can see that when he runs the ball. Not as quick, maybe top end speed as Nick Singleton, um, but but shifty and then also not afraid to, to run you over as well. So th- those two guys are fantastic. Um, they, they brought in Minnesota running back Trey Potts. Uh, from the transfer portal as a third back who provides a little bit of veteran experience and, and, and some leadership from that, that perspective. Uh, and then the offensive line, you know, it's come a long way from, from two years ago. They, they were averaging under three yards per carry two years ago, rushing the football. And then they got up to over 4.5 last year. So huge, huge change in just a matter of two years. And I expect that to continue. They, they pretty much have everybody back along the offensive line, except for the center. And, uh, and and they're, they should be ready to rock and roll. Expect a lot of pulling guards. Expect a lot of, uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it read options, but uh, different reading keys, right, where, where maybe the quarterback can, can hand the ball off or he can throw that, that, little, uh, that little slant pass, whatever the case may be. I, I don't think you have to worry about Drew Aller running as much as Sean Clifford, um, but he does have the ability to, um, if he really has to, to maybe pick up a yard or two. Okay. Okay. I can dig it. I, you know, I think he presents a big enough threat with his arm as it is, of course, and get into that briefly, but I definitely think the matchup to watching this game on both sides of the ball is going to be in the trenches and specifically here, West Virginia is breaking in a lot of new defensive linemen. So it's an area to watch and something that Penn state could potentially take advantage of there with their great running backs. And like you said, that great offensive line there, but as West Virginia fans were really concerned about the Mountaineers secondary last season, yeah. it really left a lot to be desired. They're trying to correct that this season. And hopefully, you know, we got our fingers crossed that they've brought in some pieces that are really going to help the Mountaineers there in the back end. But Penn State has a quarterback that is likely to be a future superstar in college football. Tell us about Drew Alar and tell us a little bit about his wide receivers as well that he has there in that Penn State passing attack. Yeah, you know, I when we were looking at West Virginia so far this year, it was it was like, hey, you know, they they did pretty well against the run, and it was really just the 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 back seven that kind of left a little bit more to be desired there. Uh, I really think West Virginia just has to take the ball away more. Um, it's amazing how takeaways help make your defense look better, um, mm-hmm. and when you only have four interceptions, that that's just not going to cut it. So it was bad. Um, yeah, and, and and really, I think that's an important part of this game, right? I mean. An opportunity at times. Who know? You know who knows how good Drew Aller is going to be right off. You know from the first game. I would venture to say there's going to be mistakes that happen. Right. That that's to be expected. And so I think West Virginia will have to try to capitalize on those more than maybe what they did last year. Uh, but you know he's got a rocket of an arm. I mean we know that for sure. We've seen some practice now where he's throwing 20, 30 yard bombs, maybe at a higher clip than we saw in, in with Sean Clifford. So there, there might be a little bit more trust there as far as throwing the ball further down the field. Uh, as far as the wide receivers go, uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it a question mark, but it was something that Penn State fans wanted to see a, an improvement on this offseason. And so you lose Parker Washington. They actually tried to bring in a couple transfer portal guys. Uh, Caden Prather uh, was one of those guys who ended up going okay. to Maryland. Um, they recruited him pretty hard when he was back in high school. Uh, they did bring in Dante Cephas, who's a transfer from Kent State. Um, and they have four uh, receivers that were freshmen last year that are coming back. Would they expect to see a little bit more um, from those guys? But the main one to worry about is Keandre Lambert-Smith. He's the one who had the big game in the Rose Bowl. Um, he's very flashy. He's very quick. 
kind of going to be expected to be the guy uh, in the receiving core room. He's He's got all the tools. He just hasn't necessarily shown the consistency yet, and so they're going to rely on him heavily. But to be honest with you, Jordan, I, I really think – the tight ends are going to play a huge role in this offense, especially for a young quarterback. Uh, They have two tight ends that are probably going to get drafted next year. Theo Johnson arguably could be a first or second round pick, depending on what he does this year. Um, Both him and Ty Warren run about 270, 6'6", 270, 260, and and they can run. And so they're they're going to be a big body target for them. And and James Franklin's already said, hey, basically we consider those guys wide receivers. So – it's up to the wide receivers to prove that they deserve to be on the field more than the tight end. So you might go five wide, but you might have two tight ends out there. And that, that provides a little bit of a wrinkle that maybe defenses aren't prepared for. Yeah, definitely. And that's certainly scary. Um, as a West Virginia fan, we've never uh, done a great job covering tight ends throughout our history. So hopefully it's something that they're <laughs> planning for. I'm sure that they're prepared for some of those heavy sets. Hopefully that they are anyways. But West Virginia is certainly going to have to improve on that back end. Like I said, Drew Aller with that scary big arm, all those tight ends. It's going to be a matchup to watch there as well. But flipping it over on the other side, um, West Virginia, you know, I think that this is an area that they're – looking to see improvement on they're breaking in a couple of quarterbacks that are going to be more dual threats and uh the one that i believe is probably going to be the starters garrett green and he's been known more as a run first type guy and the passing elements what he really needs to develop specifically going through all of his reads and not taking off too fast and i know the penn state defense doesn't really have hardly any weaknesses but from what i've heard the young secondary may be one of the only question marks on that defense but what can you tell us about the penn state pass defense is it the weakness of the defense if there is one no (laughs) uh no um if you if you if you're looking for a weakness i would i would maybe argue defensive tackle um there's some question marks there as far as whether or not their size is large enough to contend against the the Michigans of the world. Um, but no, uh, secondary, especially at corner, they have, you could argue, maybe even a better tandem than they had last year. And and Joey Porter Jr. was the 32nd overall pick. And they brought, you know, Johnny Dixon was, was the backup last year. He played a lot because Joey Porter Jr. actually had appendicitis. And so... Kalen King, he's going to be a first-round pick next year. And then Johnny Dixon uh, is going to be just fine there. He actually had more interceptions than Joey Porter Jr. last year. So those two guys are great. Daquan Hardy plays the nickel. He's been around for four or five years, so he's got plenty of experience. Um, they do lose Tig Brown at safety, who's with the 49ers now. And and so Love that, that is – Yeah, I mean, that guy – it was a heart and soul of the team to a certain degree. He could, he, they lined him up at, at defensive end sometimes. Like the guy played everywhere. Um, so they will miss his versatility. But as far as what they brought in and the the depth they have behind them, I think safety might be the most athletic and the most well coached with Terry Smith being their uh, position that Penn State has. So you've got Zaki Wheatley, who played a bunch last year, just didn't start. You've got Keaton Ellis, who's a fourth year guy uh, who's played a lot of football. And then Jalen Reed, who's also played uh, a lot of football for the last two years. So you got three guys that have played a bunch, just haven't necessarily started because they rotate so much um, that are all really good. But we have uh, uh, one other guy in, in KJ Winston, who I honestly think will probably be the starter by the end of the year. He played a little bit last year as a freshman, but he's got all the tools to be the next best safety. And so, uh, no, I, I think secondary is where you want to stay away if you can. I would I would recommend trying to pound the ball as much as you can and then maybe work in some play action against some of the, the Penn State linebackers. But I would not be I would be not taking shots deep against against these corners and safeties. Interesting. That's a great breakdown there. I certainly think Penn State will have the advantage there. West Virginia breaking in an entirely new wide receiving core, essentially new quarterback. So I agree, West Virginia, you know, if there is any recipe for them to try and find a way to pull an upset or to at least stay in striking distance in this game, it's going to be through the running game, which, you know, brings us to our next topic. And I think we've saved the best for last year. I think this is going to be the most essential matchup of the game. Penn State on paper, their defensive line looks great. Uh, West Virginia, you know, has a defensive line, I mean, an offensive line that uh, returns one of the best centers, I believe, in the country in Zach Frazier. A couple other great players on there in Wyatt Milam and Doug Nestor. Just worried about the other interior guards. But if they hold up, then 
they're going to do really good. I think this season it has the potential to be West Virginia's best offensive line since at least 2016, I'd say, and a loaded backfield. But they're going to be tested right away, I think, against this uh, Penn State rushing defense. Uh, what can you tell our Mountaineer fans about it? Yeah, no, I, I agree 100%. Um, I saw a crazy statistic the other day that, that West Virginia was 5-0 and when they rushed for 200 yards. And so I think that's that's going to be the, the key for West Virginia the whole season, right? Um, take the ball out of the quarterback's hands and then just get yourself into the second half and give yourself a chance and, and, and don't don't take yourself out of the game. Um, yeah, you mentioned the receivers. I do think it's a little funny. Devin Carter, who, who's coming in, uh, originally committed – I don't know if they call it committed for the transfer portal to Penn state and then ended up at West Virginia. So that, that's a little bit interesting there. Um, and, and then freshman Rodney Gallagher was between West Virginia and Penn state. So that'll be, uh, that'll be interesting to see how he can do. But as far as the running game is concerned, you know, Penn state's defensive line, especially a defensive end is, is stacked. They got four guys that are, are, are NFL picks. And then you got Chob Robinson, and deny Dennis Sutton are probably going to be first rounders when it's all said and done. Chop Robinson will come out next year. Uh, deny Dennis Sutton still has two years to go. And Adisa Isaac is fantastic too. Um, that being said, they're they're a little pass rush heavy, so like th- they're going to be fantastic in situations where you know they can just pin their ears back and get after you. And that's obviously the situations West Virginia wants to to avoid. Um, Chop Robinson has improved in rush defense just over the course of the year. He had a really great game against Utah, which just shows you, you know, Utah is a great running team. But there are opportunities to run the football. Um, you, you look at what Michigan was able to do um, from getting Penn State out of their gap assignments. There's opportunities to run the ball there. The defensive tackle spot, I already mentioned it. You do have some experience there. Hakeem Beeman has played a lot of football, and he actually – We've been jokingly calling him Hakeem Beefman because he he gained about 25 pounds this offseason. So wow. there was an emphasis on getting bigger, but you have to wait and see kind of what those results really are. So, I, yeah, I, I think you got to try to run the rock. Um, Penn State's linebackers, Abdul Carter is probably one of the best players in the country. But, again, he's a splash guy. He's an athletic guy. He, he, sideline to sideline, he'll chase you down. He'll He'll, he'll tackle your quarterback but you might be able to run at him a little bit more. Um, and, and same thing with Curtis Jacobs, who's been around for a while. The Mike linebacker was a question mark coming in the last year. Both of those guys are back this year, so you feel better about that. But there were still times where, A, Tyler Ellison, who who's likely the starter, um, just didn't make the play in the hole. And then the opposite side, Kobe King, uh, who will play a lot this year, sometimes was out of position, but would make the play if he got there. So kind of the opposite sides of the spectrum with the two Mike linebackers, um, but definitely an opportunity to probably run the ball, especially early in the season, right? I think if you play, you know, Penn State in October, I think maybe that those question marks are gone, a a defense tackle and linebacker, but probably not going to be gone uh, by the time, uh, by the time Penn State heads October. Right on. Excellent analysis there, Corey. Appreciate that. I agree. I think that that's West Virginia's recipe right there. If they're looking for one for an upset, they need to try and run the football. And like you said, early on in the season, especially that's, you know, the most time that upsets happen there is within that, you know, first week when people are still trying to get their feet under them and such. And however, Penn State certainly appears to have the advantage in a lot of these areas, I feel like. And my prediction, of course, will come later on in this episode, but I wanted to get your thoughts on a score prediction for this game, of course. I think the spread at this time that we're recording is like 20 and a half. Uh, you know, I won't, like I said, I won't give away my prediction yet, but I will say I think West Virginia can cover that at least. I think they're going to keep it uh, closer than the experts think currently. But uh, what are your thoughts as far as a prediction for how this game ends up? Yeah, I think the the uh, the first games are the hardest games to predict, right? You don't really know what to expect yet. You don't really know – but especially in the era of the transfer portal, um, teams change so much now from the previous year. And so there's so many new faces. So it is difficult to predict. Um, Penn State playing at home definitely helps. It being at night definitely helps. I'd be kind of curious to see where Garrett Green um, is able to, to, to operate in, in that environment. And it really comes down to if West Virginia is able to run the ball, I think they do have an opportunity to cover. Um if there aren't, if they aren't able to run the ball, I think it could get pretty ugly pretty quickly. If Penn, if Penn State's defense is able to get them in third and longs and say they have a 14-point lead, 
Um, and they're able to kind of just pin their ears back and come after him and, and really make him throw more than they probably want him to. Um, it could get, it could snowball and, and get ugly fast. Um, I, I hadn't really thought about a score yet. Uh, I do think the only way it stays close as far as the spread goes is if it is a low scoring game, right? So if Penn state doesn't want to open up the passing game yet because they just, a don't trust Drew Aller yet, or they just don't want something crazy to happen. If Drew Aller goes out and throws two picks right off the bat, you know, what does that say a about his development? But also you keep West Virginia in the game where maybe you don't have to if you just ground and pound it and, and take care of business um, in, in the third and fourth quarter. So I'd be kind of curious how they decide to play it. I, it's it's funny because if you really want to beat West Virginia, you would want to throw the ball. But being that it's it's a little bit new or we don't really know what to expect, I'll be curious what they decide to do there. Um, I have a feeling they're going to throw the ball a little bit more than, than maybe we expect them to. And um, – and I just don't know if I can see West Virginia scoring any more than about 14 points. So um, I'd probably put my prediction right around the spread, um, somewhere around probably 38 to 14 or so. I think that that's roughly where we're going to come out. I just, I'd be shocked if West Virginia can get above 20 points uh, on the road against this defense. But also, I don't know what to expect as far as what Penn State's going to do offensively. Like I said, if they, I really think they should throw the ball all around the yard. I just don't know if they're going to do that yet, especially in week one. Obviously, I hope that you're wrong there, but I certainly <laughs> think that that's a, that's a good breakdown. And if it does intend to go that way, it could get ugly. I completely agree. If West Virginia is forced to throw the ball more, um, unproven weapons, that Penn State defense is just scary good. And I just honestly, to be completely honest, I mentioned this, we did a season prediction roundtable episode for our last podcast episode and uh, when talking about the Penn State game I think that in my opinion you guys should be the favorites to win the Big Ten this year I think Penn State's that good so it certainly could be a game that gets ugly and for West Virginia fans listening and watching this episode <laughs> hopefully it doesn't but we'll see how it turns out that's why they play the games right I guess you could say but really appreciate you uh, giving us a little bit of your time here for our behind enemy line segment on uh, season six episode 161 of the CRW podcast having said that anything we didn't touch on or any final thoughts you want to drop in here and be sure you know plug your show one more time if you'd like as well Corey. no thank you jordan i really appreciate it the only other final thing i would mention is uh the biggest unknown really for penn state is special teams it's going to be a new kicker it's going to be a new punter i think that is something where um i don't know if west virginia will have the opportunity to take advantage of it but that to me is probably the the point of concern i have the most right now is special teams so um, something to pay attention to during the beginning part of that game. And if Penn State is having to settle for field goals, um, that, that could make a huge difference because we just don't know who the kicker or the punter is going to be. Yeah, definitely. Uh, maybe that's an area where West Virginia can try and, you know, take advantage because, you know, when you're looking for the upset, you got to try and find every little thing that you can uh, do there. And I'm sure that, you know, new, Neil, new long snapper too. So, Oh, interesting. And, you know, Neil Brown being on the hot seat, he's going to want to pull out all the stops. I feel like anyway, so I think I'm expecting Nothing trick plays and stuff. So if they see a weakness there, they'll probably try and send the house. So uh, good, good point there. Glad to see you point that out. But having said that, I guess that will pretty much wrap us up here on this segment. Appreciate Corey for joining us here and uh, be sure to check out hardcore Penn state football on social media, on all podcast platforms and check out state media there on uh, YouTube as well. But appreciate you, Corey. And I uh, hope you uh, have a good one and I uh, hope we uh, get to see a great game on September 2nd. Absolutely. Thank you, Jordan. I'm looking forward to, uh, to heading down to Morgantown next year for the game. It'll be fun too. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, man. All right, man. Take care. All right, Mountaineer Nation, now that we've heard about things from the Penn State side there, really appreciate Corey and the guys from Hardcore Penn State Football for joining us for our first Behind Enemy Lines segment here on Season 6 of the Country Roads webcast. But now it's time to talk about things from a Mountaineer perspective, and joining me to help me do so is my CRW co-host here. We've got Steven. What's going on, brother? What's going on, everybody? I see and Bradley. Good. Hello. So, uh... We heard about things from the Penn State side of things. Now we want to talk about things from a Mountaineer perspective. So we're just going to go through on some of the matchups, give our thoughts on this uh, highly regarded Penn State team, number seven in the country to start the season. West Virginia bringing back the rivalry, going to be playing against 100,000 plus there in Beaver Stadium. And it's surely to be a good one. And we'll wrap things up here towards the end with our key to victory and each give our score prediction for the game. But 
before we get into it, guys, season opener for the Mountaineers, and it's a big one. I know, you know, all of us have never really got a chance to see this rivalry live and in person. Um, you know, we were all born in the early 90s, so never got a chance to experience this one except in highlights. So that's going to make it special all on its own. Add in the factors that the Mountaineers have motivating them throughout the offseason. Plenty of bulletin board material being picked last in the Big 12 Conference. Garrett Green being ranked 69th out of 69 Power 5 quarterbacks. The list goes on and on, you name it. Plenty of disrespect for the Mountaineers. They should be a motivated team. Add into the fact the rivalry returning, top 10 Penn State team. All kinds of things on the line in this one. All kinds of storylines at play to open the 2023 season. It should be a fun one. But what do you guys here got on the forefront of your minds, just kind of opening thoughts here as we discuss this matchup uh, to open the season? What are you thinking, Stephen? Uh, you know, I, I'm really excited about this one for one of the things that you mentioned. Uh, you know, I know a lot of us were born in the in the early 90s, so we didn't really get to experience the this rivalry in its full, you know, glory, I guess. Uh, but to hear my grandfather speak about this back in the day, it was the, you know, other than the pit game, it was the game to watch. And, uh, you know, for a long time, West Virginia had, you know, battled with Penn State and then finally overcame them. I think what after 30 years, they finally beat them, and it was, it was a really, really big deal. Uh, and then if you go back and you watch some of the Major Harris and Reggie Rembrandt days, uh, and those guys play against Penn State, it, that it gets you really kind of excited to play them and and enjoy this rivalry for what it used to be. I guess um, I know that uh, I know that we really haven't had the most respect of any any team in in the world this past you know the past few months in this off season, but I, I think that uh, you know I missed the season prediction round table. So I'll, I'll go ahead and give a little bit of precursor there. I think that uh, this team has a lot of potential, um, but I think that there is a, um, a lot that they need to prove to me for, for me to, to believe in them a little bit more. Um, so I, I like, I like our chances in this game a little bit, but, but I don't really know how high, you know, how much those chances are. Yeah, I agree. I'm right there with you. This Penn state club is just, Really talented. You're looking at one of the best they've had in quite some time, potentially coming off an 11 and two season last year, in which they had a Rose Bowl win over Utah. Returning a lot of guys, brought in some others, uh, breaking in a new quarterback, but he's believed to be a stud there. And Drew Aller, he was one of the top recruits in the 2022 class, top three quarterback, five star recruit, six foot five, 240. That's the only question mark for them on offense, really, is the passing game. They're very solid in the running game. Two really good running backs they returned. Both had phenomenal true freshman seasons with over 1,000-plus scrimmage yards. And they're adding a transfer in from Minnesota in Trey Potts. So the run game certainly the strength on offense, but the defense of Penn State is what impresses me the most on paper. As you heard there from Corey on hardcore Penn State football, not really a weak link there on defense hardly. So it's a scary matchup on paper, I think, Brad. But what about you when you're looking at this one going into it, just kind of opening thoughts? How are you feeling about this season opener for the Mountaineers? Yeah, I think it's exciting to get an old rivalry going again. Um, it's definitely going to be fun. But, I mean, I think there is ways that you can view this. You can see West Virginia coming out with, a, you know, coming in to compete. There's a lot of unknowns, you know. Nobody really knows what our offense is going to look like. There's a lot of potential there, and we know that, but we don't know what the actual on-field product's going to be yet. And it's kind of the same thing with the defense, too. Big question marks, but we think we've got the pieces that can kind of make it work. So you catch somebody a little off-level off on the week one. Oh, also, pardon me, guys, I've got a cat going insane today. So she's going to be in and about and around. Um but, yeah, I think that the one big thing for me is going to be compete. Can we compete? I don't care. Really, if we come out with this with a win, that's insane. But when we, if we come up with a loss, like it's, it seems to go, be going that way, did we compete? You know what I mean? Did our offensive line compete from start to finish? Did our defensive line get whipped up, rolled out two quarters in? You know, um, did, did we even have a chance to keep it close, kind of? So I think that for me is just going to be compete, compete, compete. Yeah. Come out and, you know, give it a hell of a fight, you know, try and shock the nation, try and prove people wrong. You know, I think a lot of people have pointed to the 2014 season opener when West Virginia took on Alabama and that team really came out and showed some grit in that game. And I hope, and I think people are expecting and hoping to see that happen again 
with this team, and I'm hoping the same. You know, week one is maybe when you can catch a team. That's when a lot of upsets do happen. Um, Neil Brown has a history of upsets in his coaching history back at Troy. He was 20-plus point underdogs, went into Baton Rouge and beat a ranked LSU team. So it's not unprecedented for him to pull off something crazy like that. But let's get into the nitty-gritty of the matchups that we're looking at in this one. Let's talk a little bit about the West Virginia offense going up against this Penn State defense because that's the vaunted aspect of this Penn State team. They're solid across the board. Um, you know, you heard Corey talk about it there. To me, the standouts when I watch them is uh, defensive end Chop Robinson. I think he's really good. Uh, cornerback Kalen King, among others. Coordinating that defense for them is Manny Diaz. Been around college football a long time. Previous head coaching experience, of course. But the West Virginia offense is going to have a bit of a new look this season. Um some of the plays may look similar to you, but I think you're going to be seeing some different things. You're going to be seeing a lot of two-back sets. West Virginia utilizing that deep backfield and that offensive line that returns 132 starts together. So uh, one of the most experienced offensive lines in the country, and I think going to be one of the best offensive lines of West Virginia in quite some time, probably since at least 2016. Garrett Green taking over at quarterback gives you another aspect that the defense has to prepare for as well in that running game. So for West Virginia, Virginia, I think much like I mentioned there with Penn State, the question mark is if Penn State loads the box and finds a way to stop West Virginia's running game, can they beat them with their passing attack as West Virginia's wholesale replacing their wide receiver room as well, bringing in some transfers, some young guys, and uh, bringing back some JUCOs from last season to try and do that. But, Stephen, what are you thinking as far as West Virginia's offense going up against this Penn State defense? Do you like Garrett Green and these guys? Do you think they'll be able to move the ball, gain some yards, and uh, score some points against a tough Nittany line defense? Uh, for the, for a lot of the things that you mentioned, I do, I do like the way that West Virginia's offense has a chance to look in this game because I think that they're going to be very run heavy more so than they have been in a very long time. Um, you guys know how I love comparisons, um, but respectively, uh, I think that this could be a very similar style offense into what we had with uh, with Steve Slayton and Pat White. Um, I, I've said that for a very long time. Um, I think Garrett Green, the way that he can drop back and cut up the middle of an offensive line and see when he can you know, very early on when he should scramble and when he should pass, um, I, I, I like that ability from him. I, I love our running back room, but for – for what you for what else you mentioned and if they load the box and stop our run game which i very strongly feel like they can do because they have a great defense uh, with as well as i think we can run the ball i just don't think it'll be well enough um i don't think that we're going to be able to pass the ball that well that early in the season um against that good of a defense so i don't think that west if they're if they're forced to pass the ball i don't think that they're going to be able to to get enough you know, momentum going to be able to overpower that defense and score enough points. That's going to be the test. That's going to be the test for sure that people are going to watch to see has Garrett Green developed in the passing game? Has he developed in his reads, um, his ability to go through his progressions instead of, you know, just immediately take off at the first sign of trouble, which has kind of been the knock over the past couple of years. I think we saw him start to really grow in that late last season. And by all accounts through this offseason, he's really started to come into his own, especially throughout fall camp. So hopefully that continues to develop. Hopefully you see guys like Devin Carter, Cole Taylor, those guys step up and uh, play good there at the receiver positions because you're going to need some guys to catch some passes, I think, there. If you're going to want to find a way to, you know, score some points and ultimately have a shot to win this game. Although I do think, you know, your ultimate recipe for an upset here is to try and possess the ball, use that run game if you can. But as Steven said, that's easier said than done because this Penn State defense is going to be tough, Brad. But what are you thinking about West Virginia's offense and how they match up against this Penn State defense? Yeah, I think that if we want to have a chance to win it, it's really going to come down to the offensive line um, and being able to get the run game established early. I think that if we can get some push forward, I think that we're going to be able to do that. I think that we're going to be able to like chug, 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 chip away, chip away. And from what it sounds like, you know, Penn State's got some really nice safeties in the back back there. And so if we get the run game going, you might kind of force those really good players to step up and feel like they have to kind of like help stop the run. Um, and I think that that's going to give you opportunities on the back end for some of these guys that can kind of just like break one and take one, you know? Um, and I, I feel like that's what you're going to have to do to win, you know, is hope that, you know, 
use the tight ends a lot for blocking in the beginning of the game, get towards the end of the game, let them slip off for a couple of deep ones. You know, after they've been expecting the same thing from you all game, you just get up in behind them, things like that. Um, it's going to take that kind of effort plus some trick plays and some craziness of, you know, pitch, shovel pass, you know, to Nico out in the flats who's going to throw it to Garrett Green on the other side who's <laughs> going to then lateral it to Cole Taylor. I don't know. We're, we're going to have to get crazy with it. Pull out all the stuff. But it's going to have to happen. Backyard football. Yeah, definitely. But like I said, I feel like a big part of it, the unknowns, and especially when you hear the exciting things coming out about the freshmen in fall camp, you hear about Rodney Gallagher and you hear about Traylon Ray, two guys that, you know, Penn State – Penn State knows about Rodney Gallagher, obviously. You know, they, they recruited him really hard. They know who that kid is. Um, but you get somebody in there like Traylon Ray that Penn State's not really considering, hasn't thought about, you know, they might be catching bits and pieces out here in summer camp but um, or fall camp. So those things like that can be really dangerous when, when nobody knows it's coming. That's true. That's true. That's a great point. And I like, you know, what you mentioned there about the trick plays and not knowing what's coming because something that we've heard uh, throughout fall camp when uh, some of the players have been asked about new offensive coordinator Chad Scott, who I know we all love. And despite the fact that Neil Brown's calling the plays, Chad Scott's definitely been heavily involved in the development of this offensive game plan that they're going to use for this upcoming season. We know how good his running back room has been. And one of the great things that I've loved hearing is uh, some of these players are saying, Chad, Scott has a really creative mind. Some of the plays he's coming up with is really innovative. You're going to be surprised by some of the things you see. So I think West Virginia is certainly going to have an aspect of their game to that. I think the offense is going to look different to some extent. I'm excited to see how we're going to utilize these tight ends and how we're going to use multiple running backs because by all accounts we're using uh, two running back sets a lot. So that's going to be fun to watch. And that is the recipe, guys, is being able to run the football. We know that's been you know where West Virginia has found success when they've been able to do it in the Neil Brown era last year West Virginia was 5-0 and when they ran for over 200 yards per game and they showed the ability to be able to do it on good run defenses at times as well uh, Pittsburgh last year ended up uh, number eight in the country in run defense only giving up 108 yards per game uh, for comparison uh, Penn State uh, ended up ranked number 17, giving up 111 rush yards per game. And West Virginia ran for nearly 200 yards on that pit team um, in that season opener. So that bodes well for this season, especially when you have an offensive line that's returning all those players with a bit more experience. C.J. Donaldson in his second year this time fully trained as a running back. And then that's when you also still can talk about Justin Johnson, Jalen Anderson, and another impressive freshman in Jaheim White. So I think West Virginia has a chance to uh, move the ball on this uh, Penn State club, but anything else you guys want to talk about here with the West Virginia offense? Any players we left off, or uh, anything you want to add? Hmm. No, I I do think that there is a uh, a little bit of a chance that we see Nico Marchio in this game. I will yeah, say I, that. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, I think we'll definitely see Nico. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised yeah. to see at uh, least a little bit him get a few snaps. I think so too. Uh, and you know, as Brad said, it may be even involved in a trick or ration scenario where Garrett stays on the field, even with him on there. Yeah. I would put good money on the fact that we'll see them both on the field at the same time. Yeah. Cause let's not forget Garrett's played lined up at receiver in the past. Yeah. Yeah. He has. You know, we also have a third quarterback out there as well. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, got, you got Ronnie Gallagher out there who played quarterback. Yeah, high school. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. For the last That's two true. seasons, right? That's true. That's true. Two whole seasons of experience right that's there. True. So. Don't yeah, that's I didn't even think about that. I like that, Brad. I like the way you're thinking there. Hopefully they're thinking uh, similarly because um we've already heard him come out and say, you know, Rodney Gallagher's gonna play, Traylon Ray's gonna play. So um he's gonna yeah, be on do the field. Do a little so. like sweep do a little sweep with Rodney Gallagher behind, pitch it to him, let him throw it to a Garrett Green streaking downfield, you know? Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. Well, I know something Garrett's fun we always uh we always usually do every year for this uh, first game. We may as well do while we're talking about the offense here. Um, first play, West Virginia runs of the year. What are you guys thinking? And who scores the first touchdown of the year uh, for the Mountaineers? Uh, Brad, why don't you take this one first, man? I think it's going to be inside zone, C.J. Donaldson. And then I think first touchdown of the year is going to be – I think it's going to be Garrett Green. I think it's going to be like a 10-yard scamper. Okay, I like that. I like that. Uh, Steven, what are you thinking we got? He stole mine, so for the sake of being different, <laughs> I was going to go inside zone CJ, but for the sake of being different, I'll go outside zone CJ. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there you but, go. But I, yeah, but I was, think, somebody said that last year every single time, and that's almost what it was. Was it you, Steven? It, it, probably was. Was. it might have been, call. but like it, that's I feel so, outside zone, that's what it was every single time. They opened the game with that every 
I'm pretty sure every single game last year. Uh, but yeah, I, I also agree with him. Uh, I think it's going to be. I don't know if it's going to be a ten yard scamper. I think it'll be. Uh, I think a little little bit shorter than that, but I think it'll be a QB scramble for from GG. And here I thought I was going to be sneaky picking a Garrett Green touchdown, but now I'm going to <laughs> I'm have to change it up on y'all and say it's a Garrett Green passing touchdown. I'll get that out of the way first. Who does he throw it to? That's the question. I'm going to say he throws it to Cortez Braham. First touchdown of the year. Uh, Garrett Green hooks up with Braham. And the first play of the year, um, in my opinion, I'm going to say, man, y'all took the good ones. Uh, <laughs> oh, but, yeah. Uh, took the probable uh, ones. Here, I got I got one. Y'all ready? People will love this. People are going to love this, okay? Screen pass to Devin Carter. <laughs> Ooh, a little bubble uh, screen? A little, a little screen a, game. You got to whisper. You got to whisper screen game because uh, fans will get pissed, Steven. They hate it. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> if it's a bubble screen, I'm throwing my – remote to the team. I was about to say everyone's gonna be mad if that is it, but I'll, that's why I'll do hey. it just for the just for the We'd be hearing that the wide way. receivers are blocking better, you know. So <laughs> hey you never know. Never so know. I'll go They're gonna throw it. It's gonna it will be thrown. Now chances are it's something to CJ. So you guys probably took it. I should have said a pass to CJ. Okay screen pass to CJ. Let's do it that let's do it that way. That's my final answer there. Mark it down. Bookmark it. That's screen pass be. to CJ. There you go. Halfback that's screen it. CJ. That's it. So there we go. Uh, some thoughts on the Mountaineer offense going up against the Penn State defense, but got to flip it around and talk about it the other way now. The Penn State offense going up against this West Virginia defense. You heard a little bit about the Penn State offense there from the hardcore Penn State football host. Corey did a great job breaking that down. Drew Aller, I uh, talked a little bit about him earlier. I think he's a future superstar, but hopefully West Virginia is catching him at a good time early in his career and first game of the season. I know it's at home, but still it's under the lights in prime time and maybe that causes nerves to uh creep up a little bit you got to hope if you're a mountaineer fan there for him because like i said that's the question mark uh, for penn state as well as the passing game just like west virginia is pretty much wholesale replacing their wide receiver and core so is penn state uh they brought in dante cephas a transfer west virginia was recruiting uh going to be a bit of a kent state reunion in this game dante cephas for penn state west virginia has Deshaun polk and montre miller uh but then lambert smith's going to be the main guy at wide receiver for penn state to watch Penn State, though, is going to incorporate a ton of tight ends. We're going to see an offense that's a lot of heavy personnel, almost, you know, an old school type attack that you still see sometimes in the Big Ten. You're going to see some eye formation, going to see a lot of run heavy attack from the Nittany Lions, I suspect, in this game, especially with Drew Aller being as young as he is. They've got two great backs. I mentioned a little bit earlier, Catron Allen and Nick Singleton. Singleton, more of the speed guy, Allen, more of the power guy. And they've also added pots for Minnesota. So, uh, this Penn State offense is going to attack you in multiple ways. I think they'll look to try and establish the run and then maybe get Aller involved in some play-action pass game, trying to hit in those tight ends and Lambert Smith downfield. Uh, West Virginia, we know they're going to have to improve defensively if they're going to want to find success this season. That's kind of the area everyone is watching, specifically passing defense. So who knows how much that will be tested. As I said, it's a run-heavy Penn State attack, but it will be tested at times, and we got to hope West Virginia's improved that second but the matchup I'm watching is West Virginia if they're able to stop the run. We know West Virginia's replacing some defensive linemen. They brought in some guys. They're returning some guys with experience led by Bluefield's very own Mercer County native Sean Martin. But, Stephen, what are you thinking here about this Mountaineer defense trying to stop this uh, Penn State offense who's done a good job scoring in recent years? Uh, well, I'm a, I'm a lot like you. I think that West Virginia needs to do uh, a good job of stopping the run game. Um, and I don't know if they're going to be able to do that. Um, I, I really love Lee Coba. Uh, I love, you know, Sean Martin and I love a lot of the guys along our, our defensive line, but I think that that, I think it's going to be a little bit of a flip this year in, in terms of the way that our defense works. I think overall we're going to be a better defense. Um, but I think that we are going to be better at pass protection than we are at run, run defense. Just in my opinion, with the way that everything with what I've been hearing from, you know, all the press conferences and everything. Our run defense just doesn't seem to stand out as much as it has in uh, in recent years. Uh, but I do like what I'm hearing from the guys on the back end. I think Lance, everything I've heard from Lance Dixon has been good. Um, I've heard Beanie Bishop being being mentioned a lot. You know, a lot of these guys, Aubrey Burks, if he can 
he can get back to being healthy. That's I think guy. he's going to be a playmaker. Uh, so I think West Virginia is going to do a pretty good job of stopping the pass. Uh, I will say that. Um, but I just don't think that they're going to be able to stop the run. I think that those two guys you mentioned, uh, Singleton and Allen, I think that those two guys are uh, one, too experienced and uh, too talented to be stopped. And especially, I, like I said, I think that West Virginia will do a good job of stopping the pass with the mixture of this new quarterback in play. And then, you know, you have as much talent as we have on the back end. It's just going to be flopped from what we have in the, in years past. And, uh, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong on that, but I just don't see a stop in the run game. Yeah, hopefully, because that's that's worrisome in this matchup, because that's what you're going to need to do if you want to have a chance, because I think Penn State's going to try and wear you down with that throughout the game, and West Virginia's going to have to try and withstand. We've heard defensive line coach A.J. Jackson say he thinks he can go you know, 10 deep, almost to the point where he said he feels like he has hockey lineups he can run in and out there. So hopefully West Virginia does, and they're able to stop the run, because that's going to be a big key to this game as they try and stop this Mike Yersich-coordinated offense who – we know from his time at Oklahoma State in Texas, and he's always fields a good offense, fields a good team there, and he's trying to do it again here with this Penn State club, Brad. But what do you think here? Do you think West Virginia can get enough stops against Penn State here to have a chance to stick in this game and maybe even you know keep Penn State below 30 points, which I think would be a good target threshold for them in this game? Yeah, I think that they're going to come out fresh. I think they're going to come out hungry. I think they're going to come out motivated. And so I think that we're definitely going to give them fits early. I think that our defense is going to kind of be a little more cohesive and, you know, uh, showing flashes of what they can do. But I think as the game goes on, I think that we're just going to get a little bit more worn out. Um, I actually think that we have the potential to get a couple turnovers early. I think that we're just going to kind of catch them off guard with how big and physical we can play um, and how fast we can be. So I think that we can put a little bit of pressure on early. I think that we can get a couple turnovers early maybe that give us a chance. But I think definitely as the game goes on and those tight ends have been leaning on your uh, line for a while, you know, and those big offensive line have been leaning on you for a bit, I think that that's where we're really going to start to see a little bit more separation in the later game where we just can't keep up. Yeah, that's what I worry about. That's what I worry about when you face this kind of attack. And especially, you know, you're not really used to seeing it. There's not too many teams in the Big 12 that play that way, although it's kind of gone that way a little bit in recent seasons. You've seen some, you know, Iowa State's incorporate a lot of tight ends. Baylor's, you know, had that RVO offense. So you've seen it in some aspects, but um, they've had all offseason prepare. So that's the good thing when you're looking at it um, through that glass. But, um, I'm worried about the Penn State running game in the long run as well, um, hurting West Virginia. But I'm hoping that the Mountaineers in the back end, as Steven said there, can hold up. And my guy, Aubrey Burks, who you mentioned, I hope he can make a play. I think West Virginia is going to need to force some turnovers probably if they want to try and find a way to you know win this game and try and pull what, what would be an amazing upset for the Mountaineers in this one. But on offense, I know we talked about our – you know, first play of the game and first touchdown prediction here on defense. Uh, why don't we say this? Who are we going to be talking about on Sunday if West Virginia either emerges victorious or really puts up a great showing against Penn State? Who on this defense do you think would have had a great performance in order for that to happen? Uh, who do you think in there, Brad? Uh, Leak Pogba, right? Right. Like that. Pro- probably, probably who's got to be. Um, if our linebackers are able to step in and really stop the run, or even more so maybe somebody like a Trey Lathan or if a Will linebacker actually, you know, maybe they aren't the best player on the field, but they cemented themselves in that spot would be huge. Um, that'd be almost just as important as, you know, anything else. So uh, definitely if we were to come out and win this and keep their scoring down, I'm going to be looking at the linebackers and wondering, you know. Good call. Steven, what about you? What are you thinking? How likely, but – uh. I think I'm going to say Lance Dixon. I think he's got a lot of potential on that back end, and I think if we're going to – we've really got to con, you know, control things on that back end, and if we do, we're going to be talking about him after Saturday. I like that pick because that – you know, let's not forget, he transferred from Penn State a couple of years ago, and that's – you know, we talked about motivating factors for West Virginia in this game, the bulletin board material, but there's some involved with just the matchup as well. 
you know, despite the fact it being a rivalry game. But there's guys that, you know, are at West Virginia that came from Penn State, Lance Dixon, Fatorma, Mulbo, and then, you know, Devin Carter was committed to Penn State, chose to go to West Virginia. Uh, Penn State recruited Wyatt Milam. They recruited Doug Nestor. They recruited Rodney Gallagher. And some players that will be playing for the Mountaineers are from Pennsylvania. You know, Rodney Gallagher, Jaheim White, just to name a couple off the top of my head. So there's certainly motivating factors. So I like that Lance Dixon pick. He He's one of those that has that motivating factor, being a former Nittany line. But for me, I think I'm going to go on the D-line. I think you're really going to need to have a big performance from your guys there in the middle. So I think we're going to need to be talking about a guy like a Mike Lockhart or an Eddie V. I think one of those guys is going to really need to stand out in this game for West Virginia to have – the performance they need to have to be able to win this game. I think you're going to want to force Penn State to be one-dimensional, much like they're probably going to try and make West Virginia one-dimensional and make them pass the ball. You're going to want to do the same, although Drew Aller is a guy that's a highly regarded prospect and has a bright future. Like I said, he's still going to be working out the kinks early here. So uh, West Virginia, you know, force them to pass and be ready to make some plays on those balls and uh, see what happens. But in order for you to do that, you're going to have to stuff that middle on the run. So for me, it's Eddie V and Mike Lockhart probably, I think, they're on the defensive side. But – there's a thoughts on that side as well from uh, us here on the Mountaineer side. But any other thoughts there uh, on the defense uh, versus the Penn State offense, gentlemen? I think that's all I got. I will. There's a there. There is a lot of players. I'm looking through this Penn State roster right now. There's a lot of players that I've noticed that we West Virginia either recruited or West Virginia they were committed to West Virginia and then switched over. It's a lot of players. First, this Christian Velo. He was, he's a quarterback. If oh, Drew yeah. Aller goes down, he's who we see at quarterback, and he was being recruited really heavily. I remember us recruiting him, yeah. He was a mm-hmm. lead 11 guy, too. Wow, it's crazy. Yeah, a lot of similarities. There's a ton of uh, similarities here, for sure. Absolutely great way of putting it because uh, – it's interesting, you know, there's, like I said, a ton of great storylines aside from just the rivalry returning season opener going on the road against the top 10 opponent, which, you know, I just realized this recently, guys. This would be, if West Virginia was able to win this game, the highest ranked regular season road win in school history. The other two oh, wow. that they've won were both ranked number nine. So Penn State's ranked number seven. So, so Oklahoma on the road was yeah, number nine? Uh, they were number nine, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that would be uh that would be huge. Talk about a talk about a monumental program changing win and course career course changing win for Neil Brown, really. For sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, if we I'll say that if we win this game, the ceiling for this season gets a lot higher for myself. Things will change. The tune will change. Oh yeah, that's immediately like everybody's like, oh now we've got to go undefeated or he gets fired because you know you won one game. Well, I, I don't think they go undefeated even if they win that game. But Well, the national media will, will be the new darling and stuff. But, you know, that's one thing, though. You know, you go back and look this time last season what people were saying about TCU. Even even like on our prediction show, I think I predicted TCU to go 5-7 and seven or something like that last year. So, you yeah. never know. Somebody can come out of nowhere. Why not us? That's what I always like to think. But right now is the perfect time because if we're going to be optimistic, we may as well be optimistic right now, game week leading up to week uh, to game one of the season because later yeah. on in the season we might not have the opportunity to be. Yeah. Well, like I told you earlier, cruising the text, I, I – you know, I got to go with my gut feeling until Neil Brown gives me something to believe in. I love everything that I've heard about this offense. I'm loving more and more what I'm hearing about this defense through the offseason, no matter what I'm hearing from outside sources and the rankings that people come up with and all that. That's that's one thing. But we've seen what, you know, Garrett Green can do. We've seen what C.J. Donaldson can do. We've seen what this offensive line can do. We've seen what a lot of this team can do, and we know what we should be excited for. Uh, whether other people can see that and other coaches in the country can see that, I don't know. But the reason I'm, I'm predict, I'll, I'll let everybody else know that because I wasn't for the season prediction show. I was, I, I've got them going six and six, so that's my gut feeling. My ceiling is about nine and three, with the potential that I think this team has. The floor is five wins, I think. Yeah, that's that's not bad. That's not a bad prediction at all. I'm, you know, right along the same lines with you. And, you know, going into the season prediction roundtable show, I figured I would pick around six wins, but just the way the schedule worked out, I felt a little bit more confident about it. And I guess, you know, the more I've heard through fall camp, I've gotten more confident in this team. I think that offensively, I think they really bring something to the table. I think they're going to be able to move the ball and score on just about anybody. And we're going to get a good barometer of that here in this first game because this is 
going to be the best defense they'll face all season, in my opinion, right off the bat, and maybe the best team they'll face all season. So if they're able to, you know, move the ball and score points against them, I feel really good about the offense. To me, it just all relies on how much can this defense improve from last season, uh, specifically in the secondary, because they can't be worse. They, there's no way they're not going to be at least the same or better, but we need them to be significantly better, I think, to not only get to six wins, but, you know, beyond that, but at least to get, you know, to six wins to get back to a bowl game. To me, it just depends on this defense improving this season. I'm pretty confident in this uh, Mountaineer offense overall. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, with with Neil Brown being on the hot seat as much as he is this season, um, if we go six and six, but our offense is significantly better, does it keep his job? Or does he lose his job? Brad, I'll let you take that one first. I I want to say he loses his job. This is what I want to say. Right, This is last year's contract anyway, I think. Or has he got two more years? Anybody know contract deeps? Uh, 2025, I think. Uh, I think, I think two his... more. He's still got two yeah. more, yeah. Yeah, so I feel like we probably don't fire him. We're just too broke right now to fire him. Yeah, pay, yeah, payout's too high. <laughs> and with the, the student, this you know – Student union being in the state that it is. I don't know if you guys seen that, but there's a, a big uh, people picketing firing Gordon Gee on the yeah, mountain later on. There's, there's a whole thing about it. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's an issue right now. But I I don't think that we would. Red Baker's it. loving life. Oh, he's my having man. a little time. My right man now. took a job that he had no idea he was getting himself into. <laughs> Whew. Talk about a whirlwind. But no, I don't think that they would fire him honestly because looking at it the way I'm looking at it, if we were to go six and six. That probably means that we struggle through September and then the back end of the schedule, we pick up a lot of wins and probably do decently in conference. And I think, you know, if Ren Baker's watching that, he's seeing the team improve from beginning of the year to end to reach that six wins. And if the offense is putting up great numbers and the defense looks better than it did the season before, he's like, okay, we're on a good trajectory. So I think he would keep Neil Brown around and, I honestly may not be upset about it, depending on how good that offense looks and who the six wins are against, I guess. Because you got to remember, we're having a lot of return next year, too, anyway. We're still not very stacked on seniors. Yeah, we have. I think we have six seniors on this team, if I'm not mistaken, when I looked. And I don't know if all six of those are fifth-year seniors or not, but um, I know it was five or six when I looked. So, very young team, yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Doesn't Gigi get another year next year? Yeah, Gigi's back. Um, the only – there's a couple caveats to that, though. Like, Zach Frazier, I don't think, will be back, even though he can be. No. Yeah, so, you know, but overall, on paper, only like six seniors, so. If Garrett can have a season, which, you know, there's a lot to that. He's, you know, he's on film now. People can game plan. You know, we'll we'll see if we see the same Garrett Green that we've seen in the past, which I feel confident that we, we probably will. Um, but if he can have, you know, that type of season, you know, who knows? We may be able to get some people in the in the transfer portal or, you know, whatever may happen. We can switch some guys around. Did you around see Zach and... Frazier could have another year? Am I crazy? Yeah, yeah, Zach Frazier's a junior. Yeah, he's a junior this year. Oh, I was – wow. I, I, I mean, I, I, could, I wouldn't be surprised if he came back. Yeah. I don't know. He's projected. I think he's projected, like, right now, second rounder, like, initially even before the season or something like that, top three rounds. I think I saw something like that. So Speaking of – I've seen something that I never even realized yesterday. Dan Moses was like the best college center in the country yeah. two years in a row. I never realized he he's, never got drafted. You know that he's the only uh, major award winner ever at WVU football to win, you know, one of the major in, end of the season awards, you know, because Stedman should have won the Bolitnikoff, got robbed. Right. So he's literally the only one we've ever had was when he won the, the Remington Award. And he never got drafted. Never that got blows drafted. my mind. I th- well, I think a lot of it was West Virginia's scheme that they were using with Rich Rod. It was that zone run scheme. And so they wanted offensive linemen that weren't like big. They wanted more agile. So their offensive linemen were like 270, 280, 90. So I think it didn't project well for the NFL. That's <laughs> wild to me. It is. It is. But, uh, you know, racked up a lot of wins with the. Uh, Dan with Dan Moses at center that Rich Rod squad did and that's something that Neil Brown's looking to do he's done everything here but win so we're hoping to see him finally turn that corner this season and uh, for him to get a win over Penn State he's going to need to hit on us some major keys guys and so that for us means it's time to talk about 
our key to victory that we think could allow for Neil Brown to go on the road here and open the season with a major upset win, like we said, could be the highest ranked regular season road win in program history for the Mountaineers if they could go on the road and beat the number seven ranked Nittany Lions in game one here of the 2023 season. So we're each going to go through and uh, provide our key to victory that we think uh, would have to happen for West Virginia to be able to do that. But before we do, just wanted to say we really, really appreciate you guys tuning in here to season six, episode 161, our Penn State preview and predictions episode here. Whether you're tuned in on our YouTube channel or on the WV Sports Now channel, be sure hit the thumbs up button on the video. Give it a like it'll really help not only its performance but future videos performances on the channel and if you're a west virginia fan be sure and subscribe for some great mountaineer content throughout the season and if you're listening on the audio side we appreciate you tuning in there as well whether you're on iheart radio amazon music spotify google Podcasts, apple Podcasts, you can find us anywhere just search country roads webcast but if you're listening there be sure share us around with other mountaineer fans you may know having said that now gentlemen let's get into it it's key to victory time and then we'll follow it up with our score predictions here on our first game preview show of season six of the country roads webcast but having said that Stephen, we'll let you lead off this time uh, what's your key to victory here in this season opener for the mountaineers uh two words run game both being successful at it and stopping it uh, i think if you can do do those two things i think that's a very good recipe for success in this game and if you can do that then you you're going to be walking out of death valley then with a with a win, Death Valley or Happy Valley? I always get confused. Uh, Death Valley, right? I think it's I think it's Happy Valley. Might be Happy. I think Happy they're Valley. happy. I think they're Happy Valley. Yeah. I always get them confused. There's so many of each of those. Like, something Valley. Something the Valley. <laughs> Going to the Valley. <laughs> Is that the hidden hidden one? The Hidden Valley. Yeah. Well, they they do wear all white. The hidden probably, Valley. I so like it's, that. Uh, so it's like they look, they look like ranch dressing. <laughs> that's that's yeah, true. Right out. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. Uh, so having said that brad uh what about you uh key to victory to go down there and uh get a win in the uh, hidden happy death valley yeah i was definitely gonna say uh if you can't run you can't win so uh i'm not gonna take that now and i'm gonna say takeaways i think turnovers i think they're gonna be important if we want to have a chance to win i think that we've got to manufacture possessions Absolutely. I'm pretty much right there with you guys. I got my key to victory down is win in the trenches because I think uh, both West Virginia's defensive line and West Virginia's offensive line are going to have to show up for West Virginia to stay within, you know, a puncher's chance of this game. And, you know, that's the up recipe for an upset is keep it close throughout and have a chance there in the fourth quarter. And that's what West Virginia needs to do in this game. Control the pace of the game, make Penn State play it at their pace, however they want to run this game, whatever tempo, and, you know, let your offensive line hopefully, you know, showcase that experience and dominate on that side, possess the ball, use your run game. And then on defense, hopefully you're able to clog the run and stop their talented backs enough to force them to pass the football more than they want to and put them into some long down and distance situations on third down. And I think that'll help you. So to me, I'm right there with you guys winning the trenches. West Virginia's run game has to show up. The run defense has to show up. But having said that, guys, I guess it's time for our score predictions for the first time this season. Like we said, this is a big one. The rivalry returns against Penn State. West Virginia struggled to beat them. I don't think they've won at Penn State since the 1950s. Um, we know Penn State's dominated the series overall. Um, this is the best team James Franklin may have had there. So a lot of chips are stacked against the Mountaineers, but that also means that they have got nothing to lose. And we talked about them pulling out all the stops. Um, hopefully they do that. But having said that, Brad, we'll let you go first this time. Do they pull out all the stops? Is it enough? Can the Mountaineers shock the world and pull off a monumental upset in game one of the 2023 season? And wouldn't it be monumental for West Virginia University to start out the new modern era with a win against Penn State? But no, I don't think we beat them. I think that we keep it closer than what people are saying. Um, like I guess I think that we actually get out ahead early. Like I said, I think that we're going to get a couple takeaways early. I say that West Virginia jumps out 14 nothing at the end of the first quarter, but I think by halftime we're down by three, 17-14, and then I don't think we score for the rest of the game. I think that we still haven't just seen Neil Brown be able to make adjustments in the second half. And so I think that in the second half, Penn State pulls away more, and I think the end score is 27-14. to 14. Closer than the experts predict. 
I hope that um, the Mountaineers, you know, flip that and come out on the winning side. But I certainly like the fact that you got them performing well in this game, putting up a fight. And I think if they're able to do that, like I said earlier, it's going to be a good barometer and could bode well for the remainder of the season indeed. Steven, what about you? You got a more optimistic outcome or are you feeling uh, similar to Brad? You know, as uh, as – more optimistic as you guys were about the season. I guess I'm a little bit more optimistic about this game uh, specifically. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit closer than that. Uh, I think that West Virginia is going to play with that chip on their shoulder as they did last year. Um, I think that they're going to play a lot closer than what these pe- what the experts are going to, what they're saying that we're going to do. I think it's going to be 24 to 21. I think Penn State's going to uh-huh. get us, but but I think that the, it's it's going to be a pretty close ball game. And I think that West Virginia, hopefully, to me at least, um, they're going to go up there and even in that loss, they're going to prove, you know, a a lot about what they can be this season, you know, with as close of a game as they're going to make it in in such a tough environment. Unfortunately, I'm going to make it three for three, guys. I don't have West Virginia winning this game. But I will say one thing we all three do have in common is at the time of this recording, I believe the spread's 20 and a half. We certainly all have West Virginia covering that spread. I think that it's going to be a game where West Virginia hangs with them for a good portion of it, but we talked about it a little bit earlier. I'm afraid that late in the game, maybe they wear West Virginia down, their run game gets going, they're able to put together some long drives, and that ultimately allows them to pull away enough to secure a victory. But I have it pretty close as well. I've got it essentially a one-score game. I think, you know, for West Virginia, I mentioned earlier, keeping Penn State under 30 would be great. And if they could do that, that would give them a puncher's chance. I think they'll do that. I've got Penn State scoring 28. But I worry about West Virginia being able to score against a really good Penn State defense if they force West Virginia to be one-dimensional and pass the football, which they're probably going to try and do. Um, hopefully West Virginia, Chad Scott, and Neil Brown have some creative things in the game plan, like we mentioned, to really offset that and still maybe – find a way to manufacture some explosive plays and they'll score more than I think they will, but I've still got them crossing 20 and then staying right there. I've got it 28 to 20 uh, Penn state coming out with an eight point victory in uh, my prediction here. But uh, yeah, unfortunately uh, three losses predicted here in game one of the 2023 season. But you know, like we said, at least we're a little bit more optimistic than most of the national media has been. And I think West Virginia, as Stephen mentioned there, is going to come out with a chip on their shoulder. We talked about the bulletin board material that's been stacked up throughout the offseason, the motivating factors of these West Virginia players. And let's not forget Neil Brown is a coach on the hot seat with his back against the wall as well. So hopefully we're going to see a fire from him and from his team that we haven't seen before. And if we come out and see a team that's playing with a Mountaineer mentality, a physical hard nose edge, you know, that hard edge that we've been missing, I think throughout the Neil Brown tenure thus far, and it looks like a, you know, more of what we expected to see from Neil Brown. I'll be happy with that. If they come out and fight the way we've got them uh, fighting in this game, but Having said that, gentlemen, uh, any final thoughts in this game? Anything we didn't touch on that uh, you want to mention here before we get ready to wrap up on uh, Season 6, Episode 161 here? I will say one thing that I I didn't mention this time that I feel like I haven't mentioned. It's the first time that I haven't mentioned it in a while on a podcast. was playing clean. We had such crappy penalties last year. We had a lot of false starts, a lot of holdings, a lot of bad calls like that. And so I – I'd be remiss if I didn't bring it up again. You know, is that something that our coaches have got to clean up? Um, that, and that's all comes down to coaching, making sure that the guys are ready for the moment and, you know, not jumping off sides when we're, you're inside the five-yard line and making just outrageous mistakes like that this year. That can't happen. Um, if I see that, I'm going to be really upset. Yeah, Great point. we got to see improvements in coaching, game management. You know, let's not get false starts in critical scenarios like we've seen over the past few years. Uh, stupid personal foul penalties, things like that. Eliminate those mental mistakes. Great point. I certainly got to bring that up as well. Uh, Steven, anything else you want to add here? No, those are, those are really great points. I think that um, – I will say this. I don't think that we're – you know, obviously we're playing to win the football game. But I think uh, in this type of a game, in this type of environment with, uh, you know, as all over the places, the predictions are, you know, what could be the outcome of this team season have been this this all season. I think that uh, you're more you're playing for morals right now. You're playing for how good you're going to be moving forward, and and you know what you can take away from that. So, you know, as as I said, we're not 
not playing to win, I guess. But um, but even if we lose, I think there's a lot of takeaways that that we can take away from this game and playing such playing like we got so nothing early. to lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great point. Great point. Couldn't agree more, gentlemen. Uh, really enjoyed this one here. Our first game preview show of the 2023 season. Going to be plenty more coming along the way. You're going to have our recap shows out on the channel there, live streamed on YouTube. So if you're listening to this on the audio side, be sure to hop over to the Country Roads webcast YouTube channel. Subscribe to us there as well. Um, we'll have live streams weekly throughout the season to go along with these long-form podcast episodes. Follow us on social media, Country Roads webcast on Facebook and Instagram, and then on Twitter slash X, I guess it is now, at WV Country Roads there is where you can find us. Uh, be sure to drop your score prediction there in the comments below if you're watching on YouTube or if you're on the audio side, you can drop them in the rate review section. Let us know how you're thinking the Mountaineers will fare in this season opener game. Love to hear your thoughts on this matchup as well. So be sure to share those with us. We appreciate those interactions as we continue to try and grow the Country Roads webcast community throughout Mountaineer Nation. Having said that, let's get ready. It's time for the 2023 West Virginia football season. And for Stephen and Bradley, as always, I'm Jordan Cruz. And until next time, let's go. Mountaineers. If you really want to know, then come on, let's go. Take a stroll down those.